cruising the internet can be a scary experience. We learn that we may be putting ourselves and our children at risk by using the wrong kind of chemicals. That danger lurks in our bathroom, in our kitchen, in our cleaning agents. What are they talking about? Well, they're talking about a chemical called sodium lauryl sulfate. And why are they saying such bad things about this poor molecule? Well, first, before we discuss that, let's examine what sodium lauryl sulfate is. It's a syndet, a synthetic detergent, which was developed by chemists as an alternative to soap. Soap reacts with minerals in the water and comes out of solution to form a precipitate, your classic bathtub ring. Detergents don't do that. Here's a model of a detergent, like sodium lauryl sulfate. It works in a very interesting way. It has a long tail, known as a hydrophobic tail, which dissolves in fat. It has an end, called the hydrophilic end, which dissolves in water. Dirt is mostly embedded in oil, in fat. So this end of the molecule dissolves in that, this end dissolves in water. As we rinse away with water, the dirt gets pulled away. That's what synthetic detergents do, and they do not react with minerals in the water. They don't precipitate out. But there's a second mode of action, and this is where things get pretty interesting. Detergents destroy what we call the surface tension of water. Water molecules form very strong bonds to each other. In fact, if we examine the surface of water, it is actually like a layer. Now, I know that this is hard to understand, so we have to demonstrate it. If I take a little basket like this, strawberry basket or tomato basket, which is actually heavier than water, notice that if I carefully put it on the surface of the water, it floats. How can that be? Well, it floats because the surface of the water actually creates sort of a film as the water molecules bind together very strongly. This is the surface tension. Water forms beads when you put it on a surface. Right? You take a drop of water, you put it on a plate, it forms like a sphere. That's because the water molecules join together very, very strongly, and they do not want to link up with the air. But this is not very good for cleaning, because water doesn't spread that well. Here's what detergents do. I have a little detergent here, and look what happens. I will just place a little bit of it on the bottom of this container, and now I put it back into my tub, and look what happens. It sinks right to the bottom. It will not float because the detergent has destroyed the surface tension. So they're very useful substances. We use them in toothpaste. We use them in all kinds of cleaning agents. Now, why all of this horrific uh, story about uh, sodium lauryl sulfate? Well, I suspect that it comes from some competitors. It comes from people who are marketing various kinds of so-called natural cleaning agents. And they have just found a good scapegoat by looking at the literature and isolating some very, very obscure problems. Yes, it is true that sodium lauryl sulfate, when put into the eye, can act as an irritant. In rare cases, it can irritate the stomach. So of course, they point that out. But this is not so surprising that substances can irritate the skin. They don't do it in normal use. And then they even accuse this poor substance of being a carcinogen, that it contains, they say, a potent cancer-causing agent called dioxin. This is simply not true. This is a mistaken spelling. In the formulation of the substance, a solvent called dioxane is used. This is very different from dioxin, but I guess the purveyors of this information don't know the difference between an I and an A, and they have made this mistake and have triggered all of this venomous uh, attack against uh, sodium lauryl sulfate. They also selectively use the literature to suggest that it is absorbed into the body, which it can be but no one has shown that there's any negative effect whatsoever. So I don't have a real problem with sodium lauryl sulfate. I think it's a very interesting molecule. And uh, in fact, we are finding newer and newer uses for it. Believe it or not, researchers in, in Israel have discovered that sodium lauryl sulfate has a molecular shape very similar to a natural shark repellent, which is found in, uh, in a fish that lives in the Red Sea. And uh, they are experimenting with sodium lauryl sulfate for this reason. So if you are ever in shark-infested waters, it may be a good idea to have some shampoo along with you that you can rub on yourself, and that will keep the uh, sharks away. And the fact that it uh, contains sodium lauryl sulfate is really not a cause for worry, even though the alarmists will tell you that this is the same stuff that is used to degrease engines and to wash garage floors. So what? We also degrease engines and wash garage floors with water. Now, if we could only find a way to keep those sharks on the internet, 
away from biting all of these uh, gullible people. Makes me angry, as you can see. In fact, uh, I think I need to relax, and uh, perhaps the best way of relaxing is to take a nice bubble bath, which I propose to go and do. Uh, obviously, the bubble bath contains sodium lauryl sulfate. 